animated X-Men series from the 90s, season 5, episodes 5 and 6, The Fifth Horseman, and Jubilee's Fairy Tale Theater thoughts. So, spoilers for these two episodes leading up and the ones leading up to it. And uh, yeah, another ep another two episodes that I absolutely love. Before I get into it, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the Sign After Strikers. Please do so, it's an extremely important strike. And then there are some links to videos that explain why it's such an important strike. So, The Fifth Horseman. So, yeah, uh, Beast and Jubilee are, you know, they, they ran out of road a while back, and, you know, now they're running out of ground. You know, th this is an area with, the, you know, there aren't really any maps for it. In fact, when they left, the, the finest cartographers in the land handed them a blank piece of paper and asked them to fill it out as they went. Very cool to see Cortez again. And I like how they kind of just hand wave away. I mean, I guess Apocalypse saved him. But, like, yeah, it kind of seems like he maybe died with Asteroid M, but I guess not. And, yeah, so the Morlocks were turned into hounds. And they do evil because they were abused. Not that they were, like, inherently evil. And Cortez powers up, you know, Hank turning Dr. McCoy into some sort of beast. Seriously, though, love roided up Blanca looking beast. Just so, so cool. And I love that they just play straight this corny trope of, you know, what have I become? You know, he's wrecking the, the, car out of frustration and he sees the picture and is like no and then he sees you know world's greatest teacher i must fight on you know just no no irony no cynicism just they played completely straight and yeah um i crap i forgot his name but one of the morlocks fights back and ultimately Cortez becomes the host for Apocalypse. And there's, of course, this great, like, bitter irony in that because Cortez was happy to throw anyone, you know, like, he didn't want it to be a Morlock, but any mutant he felt would be fine. For, you know, he didn't care. You know, he didn't want it to happen to himself. And it it does, and he's not happy about it. Jubilee's fairy tale theater. So, at the start, I thought, oh, maybe this is like the clip show because that was a thing in the 90s. I'm not sure that's really a thing anymore, but like, you know, eventually the budget runs out and you do a clip show, an episode that shows a bunch of clips. You know, when, like, when, when one of the kids said, I bet you go on lots of great adventures. Or, or something, yeah, whatever. The kid said something, and Jubilee was like, well, yes, yeah, some people get to do something, you know, and then it, like, I didn't realize that at the time it was going to be a flashback. I thought that was going to be, you know, because it wouldn't be, it, it's not the first time we've seen Jubilee be left behind by the others, and she's like, come on, let me be part of it. But no, instead, it's this, you know, fairy tale where Jubilee is the self-insert you know, hero character, you know, the kind of story that the Mary Sue trope, awful as it is, was apparently named for, and awful that people hate female characters like that, not, you know, I don't think the, the I think it's extremely overblown, anyway, but, but yeah, um, and Wolverine is a troll, which, yeah, that I, I could see that. Gambit is a thief with a very distinct, like, Garrett the Master Thief, like, from the Thief games. You know, one through, f one through three, and sort of four, though it's... It's a, it's a whole thing. I don't, you know, I don't think the fourth game is bad, but it's a different Garrett. 
and yeah, you know, quite appreciated that. Like when when he's like letting them into the big, you know, he the the guild the guild of thieves, and you know, talking yeah, and they and going into Magneto's place and talking about you know, it's my job to know how to sneak into to palaces, you know, very much very very Garrett energy. Honestly, I'd I'd watch like a spin-off that this, you know, yeah, f from th that that this episode was a, a backdoor pilot to. And I I yeah, I I really enjoyed how just incredibly indulgent like Jubilee is you know, like apparently Magneto's guards are terrified of her. And, you know, even though, like, nobody else, like, everybody else really struggles to defeat the, you know, Magneto's guards, Jubilee, just, like, and, you know, at one point, she's not even looking, she's just, she's looking in the other direction and blasts a guy behind her, just, you know, what it, no, no, no look kill, I think they were called, you know, just, yeah, and even though, you know, and, yeah, and, and when, Magneto is like trying to blackmail or yeah pressure him you know he he's like you know ah your conviction is just too strong but if i torture someone you care about you know and logan isn't just like don't worry about me but he's like your light you know you you bring light into my world please don't let it turn into darkness just like i mean even if you ignore the flowery language just the Hearing Logan say you bring light into my world, and yes, haha, I get it because she makes fireworks with her fingers, but just like, yeah, that was that was very fun, and you know she manages to to make the thing go all wonky so that the the um you know Magneto has like all metal is directly attracted to it, and you know he can't control it. And you know that's also very that's that's a bit of a fantasy trope for you there, which you know he sought power but he didn't realize what it would cost, kind of thing. You know, so that's great. Um, yeah, I kind of like this. Like in Jubilee's mind, if she's telling the story, she's the hero. Gambit and Logan are in awe of her and need her help. And she's not the sidekick. Logan is her sidekick. You know, just yeah, that was that was quite fun. And it is the kind of thing where you know, yeah, they are some of the ones of of all the the people that she's met with the X Men. They are two of the ones that she has the strongest connection with. You know, they're two of the first she encountered, and they both really did a lot to save her. Now, let's see, right, I like that Ex uh, Xavier is, what did they say, the greatest sorcerer in the land or something like that? Um, right, when, when like, a, a rat shape-shifted, I thought that was going to turn out to be Mystique, but not, not quite. Um, I think that might be... More or less, it was kind of funny that you know the the metal guards who've all got this. Like, I mean, I get it. You know, Magneto has you know has taken metal things, and you know they don't need limbs really. They just need you know they've got what they need. You know, but very very Rayman with this thing of like not quite arms, just. Like a chest and and a hand, you know, kind of, yeah. I like the thing with you know, you know, we have to we have to win, but because if we lose, Magneto will turn us into pots and pans. You know, that was that was a fun little, and I yeah, I quite like this idea of you know, well, the kids are in danger, but. There's nothing, like, them knowing that they're in danger is not going to make things any better. So instead, she distracts them with the story, keeps them moving away from the danger, and, and you know, blocks off the, the dangerous parts of the cave. And, you know, yeah, that's, I, I think 
that is a, a good approach in that situation. I think that might be it for these two. Yeah, I you know if the if the show had lasted longer, I don't know if maybe this would have been like a turning point for Jubilee's character that from now on the others would trust her more. Certainly, that's kind of the vibe I get from near the end of the episode. Logan took being called a troll pretty well. Then you, of course, have the the bit with um, well, Ryan on the tip of my tongue. Sabretooth, uh, you know, that was quite a good, um, yeah, you know, I, I quite liked bringing him into it, and them apparently, like, locking him into the cave, and she's like, we'll deal with him eventually. Cyclops as a prince was fun, or wait, king, I guess, yeah, you know, I, I don't think I'll ever be completely used to seeing him without his eyes covered. Um, it seemed to me like the animators had fun coming up with these very different looks for characters that we're familiar with. You know, everyone who appeared in Jubilee's story had a completely different look to what we're used to seeing in other episodes they're in. I will never not love Magneto giving a big speech. Interesting that Jubilee still sees him as the villain. I guess first impressions really do make a huge difference. Because, like, he hasn't been a villain for a while on the show now. But, you know, in her mind, he may be, you know, yeah, he still is. To, um... Right, I, I enjoyed Cortez saying, Apocalypse cannot not exist. So what you're saying is he can exist. Now, what he's saying is, Apocalypse will always exist, you know, and that is also a nice chilling... And this also f featured like a cult-worshipping Apocalypse, which I believe is also in the comics. I don't think we really saw that before. Four. We heard like evidence that there was a cult that he had been worshipped throughout history, but I don't think we met any cult members. And I quite appreciate like the cult, you know, they have like their faces somewhat painted to resemble apocalypse, you know, the, the blue lips of of apocalypse. Yeah, that is everything. So catch you again tomorrow. Same X-Men time probably not but same x-men channel for old soldiers and hidden agendas make my marvel